Greetings, this is Dr. Gish. We're going to talk about hepatitis C today, how this might be affecting you, a loved one, somebody that you support, or just for your general knowledge. I'd like to warn you that the hepatitis C world is changing rapidly, and although we'll try to keep this presentation up to date, you'll have to talk to your provider to make sure everything that we talk about here is current. So let's talk about the liver first. Liver is in the right upper part of the abdomen. Liver has function. Liver is an organ that's a filter. It does a variety of different issues, but this is where hepatitis C lives and causes its damage, ultimately leading to cirrhosis or cancer in about a third of patients who have hepatitis C. But hepatitis C is curable. There's a lot that we can do now to change the outcome of patients with hepatitis C. So think about being tested. Think about being linked to care if positive. Very important messages. Liver, again, right upper abdomen, connected to the spleen. Here's the gallbladder. This is what a normal liver should look like. Liver enzymes are not liver function tests. AST and ALT basically means the liver is irritated. If they're elevated, hepatitis C testing should take place. If you have hepatitis C, the level of those enzymes don't directly link to what's happening in your liver, and either a liver biopsy or just moving directly to treatment are the prime options that you need to discuss with your provider. Liver synthetic tests, these are true liver function tests, are going to be abnormal very late in disease. This can make your eyes yellow, make you swell up if the albumin is low, or if the INR is increased, your blood could be thin and lead to easy bleeding. But these don't have changes until very, very late in the disease, when you have cirrhosis, late cirrhosis. But let's get back to early diagnosis and early treatment as a major theme of our presentation today. This is what a normal liver should look like. It's a person who just got a liver transplant. Reddish brown, smooth, pliable, soft. If you cut across that liver surface, you're going to see almost no scar tissue, just enough to hold those blood vessels in place. Hepatitis C affects the portal area. This is somebody with no inflammation, a healthy liver. But let's talk about what hepatitis might look like after you look at one more picture of a normal liver biopsy. Again, normal liver, just a few inflammatory cells. Hepatitis C pulls in these pus cells that can kill liver cells and lead to scar tissue, cell loss, damage, cirrhosis. And this inflammation can lead or promote cancer development as well. We want to diagnose hepatitis C. People who are positive need to be linked to care. People with serious liver disease, advanced liver disease, significant liver disease need to be linked to treatment and that chance of cure that we talked about that's getting higher every six months as new therapies come out. A little bit more on this cartoon of inflammation causing scar tissue. Another picture of somebody with cirrhosis. Again, the risk of going from normal to cirrhosis is about 30% in people who are hepatitis C positive. Scarring of the liver can lead to this cirrhosis picture. Another picture of cirrhosis. Right now, we're biopsying most patients with hepatitis C to see what stage they're at. First off, advanced fibrosis, like you see here, justifies the cost and risk of what we call interferon-based therapy. But as new all-oral therapies come out over the next two to three years, the side effect profile is going to drop by 90%, but they're still going to be quite costly. So we may still be triaging patients by biopsy or some type of imaging. We have indirect imaging now that's ultrasound based that can also help score and assess for advanced fibrosis. Ask your doctor, how good or how bad is my disease? Ask your provider, your nurse, your nurse practitioner, your PA, what's the stage of my disease? Does it justify treatment, either due to adverse events, costs, or both? Cirrhosis can lead to internal bleeding, kidney failure, encephalopathy, which is mental confusion, fluid on the belly, or secondary infections. This is what a person looks like with cirrhosis. Lots of different 
things that we look for, changes we look for on physical exam. So when your provider walks into the room to take a look at you, they're collecting a huge amount of information, even the first 10, 15, or 20 seconds of that face-to-face -face meeting in your exam room. The liver biopsy remains the gold standard for assessing hepatitis C, but not required. Again, as cost of treatment comes down, adverse events drop precipitously, we may be treating more people without a biopsy, but let's ho hope that the costs are in the right range to make biopsies eliminated and treat more individuals. Biopsies are done under ultrasound. We want to avoid the gallbladder, lung, colon. Please look at our separate discussion on liver biopsy. Biopsies can be done through the neck vein as well. And we do a biopsy. We want to get two passes, adequate tissue with a 16 gauge needle. We'd like to get about three centimeters of tissue to make sure we have adequate tissue for assessment. This is an inadequate biopsy. This is a barely adequate biopsy. It's too thin. 16 gauge needle, two passes to get structure, to get defined disease state. You can watch a liver biopsy on YouTube. Really will walk you through how simple this is and low risk. Hepatitis C is curable. Our current therapy, 70 to 90% cure rate. Treatment is being shortened from 48 weeks to 24 weeks to 12 weeks or maybe even shorter depending on the patient, the disease, previous treatment. You can find support groups. Help4HCV.org will tell you who in your region can help you. Do not drink alcohol. Do not smoke marijuana. These are both terrible for liver health. It can cause liver scar tissue, liver fibrosis, and cirrhosis. Make sure you have a normal body weight. If you're overweight and have fatty liver, you double your risk of cirrhosis and cancer and these terrible outcomes. Healthy teeth, get vaccinated for A and B. Make sure you're tested for hepatitis A and B, of course. Good exercise and regular health checkups. Hepatitis C is a systemic disease. Look at all these different connect conditions that hepatitis C has been associated with. Ask your provider for a full physical and a full laboratory assessment. One of the conditions, cryoglobulinemia, through attacking B lymphocytes, can make many antibodies through the stimulation of the immune system positive rheumatoid factor, positive cryos, and cause a terrible rash, even death to the fingertips, itching, bleeding under the skin. Looks as how bad some of these rashes can look. This can also plug up the kidneys, nerves, heart, eye, brain. Hepatitis C is not just a liver disease, but a systemic disease. A biopsy of the skin may be required to make a diagnosis. People need to look for lymphoma in hepatitis C patients who have cryoglobulinemia. This again requires a detailed exam and an expert provider. In summary, hepatitis C in the U.S. infects 5 million people, worldwide 170 million people. Hepatitis C is curable, unlike hepatitis B or HIV, a 30% chance of cirrhosis or cancer, which is increased with alcohol, increased with fatty liver and NASH. Marijuana can accelerate this liver disease. We have no vaccine for hepatitis C, but make sure you're tested for A and B and vaccinated for A and B if you're not immune, you're not infected with hepatitis B. Make sure your provider and you look for systemic disease Hepatitis C, interestingly, increases many other causes of death. So there's other reasons to treat hepatitis C, not just liver disease or some of the other indications we discussed today. Sexual transmission of hepatitis C, under 3%. Mother to baby, under 3%. Needle stick, under 3%. Very important points to think about if you're infected with hepatitis C. Treatment, I said, is curable. 1994, 
less than 20% cure rate. 1998, maybe 35%. 2001, we're getting up to 50%. And now in 2013, when we made this presentation, we're getting 70 to 80%. The next three years, up through 2016 or 17, we're talking about cure rates that may be as high as 80 to 100%. Amazing changes through research. Telaprevir and Bosepravir in 2012 and 2013 are the standard of care with cure rates, as we mentioned, that are in the 70% range. What's coming up next beyond the Bosepravir, Telaprevir world? We're expecting in December of 2013 to have Semeprevir and Cefospivir approved. Look for that emerging data. Following that time, sometime in the next one to two years, Faldaprevir and Decladosphere will be approved, and many other regimens by 2015 will be approved, including many all oral therapies, eventually to get rid of interferon, and eventually, eventually, to get rid of ribavirin. Look what happened when we had the announcement of all these new all oral therapies. The number of patients on treatment rapidly fell. So there's big cycles of treatment and what we call warehousing of patients. Keep up with the data. Keep up with what's new. Talk to your provider whether to treat now or to wait. Current treatments are tolerable. Treatment may be as short as 24 weeks. High cure rates. Concerns about disease progression. Why are we waiting? Less toxic, shorter therapy, higher cure rate, bigger impact on disease progression. There's always the insurance and the wonderful cost question. Hepatitis C, get tested. If positive, get linked to care and hopefully cure. Thank you very much.